other. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. Now, under Obama, this has all been turned on its head. When I grew up in the 50s, we, in uh, grade schools, were actually brainwashed by the government into protecting ourselves should there be a nuclear showdown between the Soviet Union and the United States. And as meek as it was, we were taught we, we weren't given flowers and closure and candy and therapists. We were told that we might get in a nuclear war with the Russia. And we were taught run in a closet again under a desk. Today, of course, the children are not taught anything could harm them except evil white males uh, and things of that nature. Now, we have a president who, in my opinion, has made America much less safe in less than the uh, year and a half that he's been president. In less than a year and a half, the man has wrecked America. We know about health care. I'm not going to dwell on it. We know it's socialized medicine. We know that most people don't even know what's in the bill. We know that Obama doesn't know what's in the bill. We know that Pelosi doesn't know what's in the bill. We know that we can't pay for it. We understand it's a a floating disaster that will emerge as time goes on. But while you are getting angry over health care, this character, this college professor, this left-wing fanatic, this lunatic has gone ahead and he's going to sign a deal with Russia tomorrow, cutting our nuclear arsenal by a third. And the Russians said, great. Great, 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 Yankee. You sign it, and we'll sign it, but we have the right to opt out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, do you feel safer today knowing that you have a radical left-wing president who is dismantling our nuclear first-strike capabilities? Now, nuclear weapons are terrifying, but by themselves, they're not really evil. Whether you know it or not, they actually prevented nuclear war for well over 60 years. And yet Obama is throwing away uh, one of history's most successful deterrents of nuclear war, which, are, which is our overwhelming strength. I want to ask you a question. What if you're walking down the street in Florida where you're allowed to carry a gun, and a guy comes up to you with a knife, and you say to him, you have a gun, you better back off, and he knows you're in Florida, you think he would continue to attack you or he'll figure you might have the gun? Now, let's switch that around. You're walking down a street in San Francisco where you're not allowed to have a gun, and an illegal alien comes at you with a knife, and you say, stop, I have a gun. Do you think he'll, he'll stop? He knows you don't have a gun, and he's more likely to attack you. And so I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, does Obama's idealism make us more safe or less safe? Now, be realistic when I say this to you. Be realistic. Don't just get up here and support Obama Because that's what you want to do. If you're not able to hold an argument, you're not welcome in the savage classroom. You could sit in the back with a dunce cap where you belong, but you're not going to get on the show and debate me unless you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that less nuclear weapons make you safer. Particularly when Russia has said they have the right to opt out of the uh, of the agreement that Obama is going to sign tomorrow. I personally believe that the world is mocking Obama's weakness and naivete. As I said, the Russians have said that they can opt out of Obama's new nuclear disarmament treaty anytime they want. The Hitler of Iran, Ahmadinejad, said to Obama he was an amateur and go get some experience. Secondly, I want to know where my government is. What the hell happened to my damn Congress? Where did this lunatic with big ears get the right to dismantle the nuclear arsenal and not a word out of Congress? I thought I lived in a democracy. I feel as though I'm screaming into the wind. Where the hell did Congress go? You're telling me this big-eared lunatic has the right to do anything he wants? King Ludwig Obama? Are you crazy? You want to live in a world like that? Are you people nuts? Where does he get the the ability to do this? Where the hell have the damn Republicans gone, those worthless check-pants lunatics? Those worthless check-pants gangsters? Where are they when we need them? In 1940, I'm going to bring you back in time. 1940, can you remember this? You know any about this? You know about a man named uh, Chamberlain? You ever hear of him? Well, by tomorrow, you'll be hearing about it on Fox News when Blackboard gets a hold of it. I talked about Chamberlain two years ago. I tried to tell you that Obama is probably worse than Chamberlain. So here's lesson number two. Shall I give you the lesson of what's coming? I'll give you the lesson when I'm in the mood. 
All I know is that we have a lunatic for a president who is trying one experiment after another. Every talking point of the pot smoking college a dorm lunatic. Every agenda item of the pot smoking up at night late lunatic in, in college dorms. Every one of his policies is a reflection of that agenda. It's as though we have a stone college teacher who has taken over the country. And there's no Congress to check him. Where's the check and balances? Let's have a vigorous debate in America. I want to hear it in Congress. I want to see both sides debating whether or not we should enter into this nuclear treaty, so-called, with Russia. Shouldn't you, wouldn't you think you want to hear that debate? Or is it like global warming? The conclusion's in already? You want to live in that kind of world? Well, I don't. I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to talk about these things as long as I'm able to. Because I'm going to make a prediction. You want to hear the prediction? Here's the prediction. The establishment itself will one day and very soon realize that Obama is demilitarizing America and they will they will they will, re, they will move to remove him from office. A point will come when even the most liberal members of the current power structure will realize that their ability to stay in power is being threatened by Obama's weakness and madness. And when that time comes, Obama will be removed by the establishment one way or the other. They'll either impeach him or they'll vote, vote him crazy. Something's going to happen. Obama is worse than Chamberlain, and I believe he will be remembered by history in the same way. Back in 1940, the British were defeated by the Germans in Norway. Many of you don't know about that. It was a small, small battle. But the British were defeated roundly by the Nazis. And um, finally, the British Parliament had a meeting, a long meeting. And even the far-left Labour Party and its leader, Clement Attlee, realized that Neville Chamberlain had to go. They realized he was not a wartime leader, that if he stayed in power, Britain would lose the war to Nazi Germany. And so the liberals held a two-day debate. And at the end of it, Chamberlain was given a vote of no confidence. He was thrown out of power, and Churchill became the Prime Minister of England. The problem here is we do not have a parliamentary system. We have a wrecked two-party gangster system where even a mad president cannot be removed from office. Apparently, even a mad president cannot be removed from office with a vote of no confidence. We have one of the worst political systems in the world. A man is dismantling America brick by brick, day by day, and there's virtually no opposition. I'm asking you, where is the rest of our government? Why have you not read about this in the newspapers? Why have you not seen this in the headline instead of some schmuck golfer hitting a ball? Some schmuck moron golfer, you're more interested in that, or some degenerate dancing on a show than you are about your uh, your security being ripped out from under you by Obama, signing one college uh, treaty after another. And the Russians are laughing at him right in his face. The Iranians are spitting in his eye. Everyone's laughing at this lunatic. Everyone except the American fifth column. They used to be known as the uh, the press. They're no longer existent. They have ceased functioning. But where's Congress? Where's the Republican Party? Where is John Boehner? Where the hell is Eric Cantor? Where the hell is the Republican Party on this nuclear situation? Why are you not talking about it? Why is there no discussion about it? The answer is because you're living in a putative dictatorship in the United States of America, a dictatorship of propaganda, which is the, the predecessor to a dictatorship period. And so I'd like to talk about this today for a few minutes. And here's the question. Do you feel safer today or do you feel uh, less safe today knowing that Obama tomorrow will sign a nuclear treaty with Russia, agreeing to give up one third of our nuclear weapons and getting zero in return? Nothing. How do you think the Europeans feel today? knowing that he's capitulated to the Russians the same way Chamberlain did to Hitler. How do you think the Czechoslovakians do? All you liberal swine are always referring to your European counterparts. In Europe this, in Europe that, in Norway this, in Europe that, with your smug attitudes. Why don't you go ask your friends in Poland and Czechoslovakia how they feel about this big-eared lunatic giving away all of their security, agreeing not to put up a missile defense shield because Russia said don't do it. 